I did. We got help from the, from the board. So this is a, a public hearing where we, 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 we only have the purpose of a public hearing to, to, to hear from you folks. So there's two items this evening. There's one on the ordinance establishing a tax abatement program for certain emergency service volunteers. The second one is a continuation of the public hearing that we had at our last meeting for the ordinance amending an ordinance concerning the Smith Harris House Commission and the renaming of said commission and house. So first we'll, we'll open up the, the new one, the ordinance establishing a tax abatement program for emergency um, service volunteers. Would someone like to speak to that? Um, Bill or, 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 or Chief or Chief, would you like to talk about uh, the program at all? Would you like to give a, a short brief of what we're trying to do? <coughs> um, uh, and then if anyone has any public comment. Chief William Ricks, Flanders Fire Department. Chief Stephen Morgan, Ionic Fire Department. Um, basically, um, after the fire study and whatnot, the uh, Board of Finance was looking for us to try and figure out how we're going to recruit more uh, volunteers. So the tax abatement, um, we got a lot of push from members of the Board of Selectmen to try and move forward with this. We tried it in the past and it was shot down. Um, it's not coming from the volunteers at all. It's coming from the department heads that want to really keep the volunteers that we have and try and entice some new ones. So basically what will happen is um, the gist of it, any active member that does 15% of calls in their selected department and holds certification of either Firefighter 1, EMT, or EMR will be eligible for up to $1,000 tax credit um, as long as their name is on the uh, piece of property. And this is for non-salary volunteers, so if it's one of our career staff, if you're on the payrolls as a part-time member, those points are not going to go to it. This is strictly for people that doing the, the calls on a volunteer basis for non-salary employees. So like the two of us work part-time in the firehouses, every emergency we go on when we're on the clock won't count toward our tax abatement. Okay. Okay. Are you always paid when you go on a call? No. Or do you volunteer too? Volunteer. So just, let, so let's clarify that. So you need to do 50% of the volunteer calls, so the ones that you're not getting paid for. I mean, how are you going to break that down? Because we have a lot of paid part-timers, yeah, right? Yep. So, so I, there is some confusion out there. I got a few phone calls on this. So nope. how is that going to break down? Okay, so it's it's more work on the people that actually keep track of our point yeah. system. So and they're okay with it. They yeah. kind of have they to. They know how to do <laughs> the computer program. They, they can break down. Yeah. Who so what calls when, when we fill out a report now for an incident, we have everybody that responded, what they responded on, and if they went to the call, they went to the firehouse, they drove a piece of apparatus, and now we're keeping track of who was actually working as well. Um, we did it before. It was a little bit more lax. There was no reason to keep track of who was working or not. Now we're keeping track. So when they do the numbers up at the end of the month, they'll know that <coughs> I made 30 calls, but 15 of them I was on the clock, so those won't get added to my tax abatement numbers at the end of the year. Okay. All right. So you'll be able to track all this, and we'll have the uh, full faith that the integrity of this 15 percent and no absolutely um, like i said everything's anything. we've been nothing but transparent with our budget so right. as far as this goes it'll be the same thing um it's basically triple checked we have the point system that does the points for the year based on the criteria that we have and then that gets given to the either board of directors or the executive board to go over and certify that everything is correct and true that the points uh committees did and then it goes to the fire chiefs to give to you to pass along to the tax collector Right. Are there questions from the Board of Selectmen um, while we're while we have the two chiefs here? Uh, yes. Do you, do you have an approximate number of how many people this would apply to? Uh, speaking just for Flanders as of tonight, there's only six people that would get it, but I have another six that are on the cusp of if they put that extra time in, they will be eligible for it. And I have another five that are active, but they don't hold the certification, so that'll push them to get their certifications and theoretically bump up our volunteer numbers. And for Niantic, about 10 to 12 people right right now would be eligible for this. Have you had uh, any people come forward who say that if this was an ena enacted, that they would be interested in volunteering and meeting the criteria? I haven't. Had no, not, not recently. Yet. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? All good. We've, we've been through this a little bit um, and, and read this through. I know there's some folks in the back, too. Would anyone else like to speak uh, during the public hearing 
uh, as we collect information and uh, comments. If anyone li uh, like to speak on this, you have to come up to the podium and you know, and your name and address, Mary. Billy and Steve, I hear your criteria for that, but what about do you still have um, for the fire police? Not anymore. So you don't have any non-trained personnel that would be spending fifteen percent of the time. You have to have certain qualifications. Okay. Have to be yeah. Certifications. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just wondering: is there any need for other things to get people involved? If, if this is going to be an incentive, do you want to lock yourself into just that specific specific areas? You know, I mean, do you need that anymore? Is that something that went away twenty years ago? Okay, that's what I just, I, I felt that you were very limited, yeah. that they were very limited, and if we're going, you know, hopefully this is going to bring more people in. You sure. We certainly need that, so let's make sure that you don't make it so tight that people are going to go, I, I'd love to help, but I can't, net, you know, that's my only thing as a town person, I'd rather have more, you know, but, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mary. And good comments, just to clarify. Mm -hmm. Make us think a little bit. Any other comments? <coughs> Any other comments? Any other comments? So therefore, we will close. The Is there anything from you folks? Thank you for putting all this together. I know you worked hard with our, with we worked together, and then of course the town attorney uh, helped us draft this up. So you're all set with uh, any comments in public hearing? Not necessary this evening. Good. Uh, thank you. So I'll, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing for the ordinance establishment tax abatement. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, any other comment? All in favor, say aye. 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 That that uh, public hearing is now closed. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll go to the regular meeting. We'll have some discussion on that. Uh, and because your department heads, uh, if you'd stick around, because we may still have questions. I doubt it, but um, um, we can call you up during that. Now we'll open and continue the, uh, the public hearing um, regarding the ordinance amending the ordinance concerning the Smith-Harris House Commission. We uh, opened this last time. We had um, some great conversation. We had some thoughtful um, uh, input from um, some citizens. And we'd like to uh, continue that uh, discussion this evening. Uh, would anyone like to address the, uh, the Board of Selectmen this evening? Mr. Lukowski, always good to see you, sir. <laughs> yes, it is. Gary Lukowski, 12 Methodist Street, Niantic, and a member of the Smith Harris Commission for about the last 20 years, I guess or so. Thank you for your service. Um, I'm just saying, here to say that I support the name change. Uh, it's going in a direction that I always hoped that the Smith Harris House would go in, which is making it a farm museum. We have historic. Uh, background for using the name Brookside and I think the name Brookside Farm Museum is a better gives gives the public a better understanding of what we're trying to do uh, the name Smith Harris House uh, in itself kind of distinguished it and left it as a house and people said well I'm going to see a house with it being a museum it's an ongoing living thing that we can keep changing uh, exhibitions and we hope get more public to the building and also be able to show the changes in farm life from 1845 until the Smiths and Harris's moved out in 1855. So I think that's an important part of our town that our town was much more rural than it is now and, and that uh, farming was a very big part of our community. So uh, with that said, I had a 45 minute speech uh, ready, <laughs> but uh, I'll, let it, I'll let it go at that. And uh, if, you, if anybody has any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer. Thank you, Gary. thank you for your comments. And again, thank you for serving so long for the Smith Harris uh, Commission. Someone else? Yes, sir, Steve. Good evening. Steve Marks Hamilton, Historic Properties Commission. Um, I want to happily report that we have met with the Smith Harris people and we've discussed the issues, discussed the change, um, discussed <coughs> a possibility of having the uh, Smith Harris Commission becoming a, a member of the Historic Properties Commission. We're talking about communication. 
Uh, we now have uh, two members of the, of the Smith-Harris group becoming a part of our commission to help us communicate better. Um, we had a, uh, we are sharing information. Um, I know there's issues involved with the name change, but I just wanted to have the report that we are communicating and talking. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's so encouraging. That's ultimately what we would like. Thank you, Steve. Um, I, I'd like to point out, as, as you hear that comment, we have maybe some a couple of selectmen that weren't here when this all went down. The Historic Properties Commission, um, the thought was they were going to kind of oversee two of the three houses, and, and they, the Smith-Harris does not report to the Historic Properties Commission because there was a boundary issue way back when. And Gary and I banged that out, and we got it fixed. We found a solution to the problem, and we have a true boundary now for your property, which then enables you to be part of the, the, the Historic Properties Commission. I'm trying to get this right. There's a lot of it. Um, and therefore, maybe more eligible for grants, but also be included. And, and ultimately, we're looking for that umbrella, that one group of people that are all working in the same direction. God bless, right? So we are now that we had that property um, boundary fixed, and we did that a while ago. We never really followed up and executed the real reason to do that, and which is to include you in the historic properties. So that's coming up next on one of your agendas coming up. We'll be we'll be uh, fixing that so that there'll be more oversight and uh, and again all working together. So. That came up, I guess, at the last meeting when we, did re we realized it wasn't communication there, but there didn't need to be because the Smith Harris house was o operating independently. Well, yeah, sure. Just, just for your information, I'm sorry. Yeah, the mic. Although I'm told the uh, audio at home is not good tonight. Just, just, for, just for your information, we did have a meeting with the, mm -hmm. uh, some of the members of the Historic uh, Properties. Properties Commission. Uh, we could go Saturday yeah. maybe mm -hmm. and I, I think uh, we ironed out pretty much everything that, that would needed to be discussed and uh, there is now a uh, a display at the house on what we're the type of thing that we're planning to do so if we'd ask the uh, Board of Selectmen if they'd like to come up and see where we're going with this sure. that would be good and we've invited the Historical Properties Commission and all the other historical groups to come up and see it. Great. Thank you, Gary. Other folks like to address? Yes, ma'am? We do the name and address thing up here yes, before we speak. Yeah. I don't usually get involved with politics. Neither do I. <laughs> 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 Kathleen Sasso, 72 Chesterfield Road. Um, I am a former commission member and a current secretary of the Friends of the Smith-Harris House. And I had a full page thing, but I just wanted to uh, report to you that I've been in contact with some of the um, relatives of the Munger Smith Harris family um, mm. Charles Munger the third Diane Sylvia and Charles daughter Mona um, I've been starting to research some of the family history on ancestry.com and I was able to connect with them through that um, I've sent them the information about our proposal and they're all uh, very happy that we're doing this because as they have fond mem memories of the farm um, as Brookside Farm when they were children and visiting and so they gave us um, their blessing as well. That's good. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Sasso. Thank you. It's encouraging. They're not getting their potato field back though. We haven't had the middle school on it now. So. <laughs> but I hope they come visit. Anyone else like to speak? Don't be shy. It's only us. Any Boy Scouts want to talk about the Smith Harris House? Yeah. <laughs> they all looked at the ceiling. <laughs> and they all had the head. Oh, good. So no other comments. Okay. Any any questions or comments from the Board of Selectmen? Yes, I had previously inquired about the status of its designation on the National Register of Historic Places, and that and, and to get that endorsement, it was registered as the Smith Harris House. Is there a problem with that, or is it registered as the Avery House? It's registered as the Thomas Avery House. So is there a problem with losing that endorsement or recognition by the Historic Properties or National Historic Preservation Society? I think you'd have to come up to the microphone. Uh, Gary, come on up. 
Gary, sit right up there. Sit closer. Yeah. Sit closer. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was always designated as the Thomas Avery House on the Historical uh, Register, even when it was the Smith-Harris House um, th through ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, that wouldn't change. It would still be on the historic properties uh, uh, as the Thomas Avery House. That wouldn't change operating as the Brookside Farm. More or less, the Thomas Avery historical property was operating as the Smith-Harris House. Now it would be operating as the Brookside Farm Museum. But it wouldn't change our status at all. And I think in an earlier presentation, uh, you had stated, or someone on the commission had stated, that they wish to um, have further recognition of the Avery family and bring in more, perhaps, uh, tourist people in the region from the Avery family visiting. And with the name change, how do you plan to do that? There will be a tagline um, cultivating the Avery, Smith, and Harris families. Under the name, it would be Brookside Farm Museum with that tagline. Would that be on your stationery? That would be on our stationery. <coughs> and on any advertising that any you do? Any advertising that we do. Most importantly, like under the Thank Google you. searches. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, most, you're most for definitely. Thomas Avery, now right. this will come right. up because so. it's not Smith Harris. Ultimately, it's okay. this Google search that's driving this. And I got a, a <laughs> Joni. Joni is back there confirming everything that Gary said. Is that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's so it's just to be on our website, which had revamped right. right now. We're redoing our website, social media, all the different ways it gets out there. That's why we're purposely adding a tag on to the website for museum. If you talk anymore, I got to get you to come up here. Okay. All right. Any, uh, well, there's a Boy Scout with his hand up. I, I don't know if he's back down now. All right, good. Okay. <laughs> There'll be another chance. All right. Any other comments? Any questions from the Board of Selectmen? We can close the uh, public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? We're out of that. Good. I think you want to take the cups. Oh, there's still another meeting, Paul. Yeah, you I, can I, stick I, around I, for another no, one. They, we'll be here till right. ten. School we'll be here till ten. <laughs> <laughs> you all, you all want to march out? <clears throat> Thank you, Boy Scouts. Good luck, Troop 240. Dairy Queen's still open, you guys. Dairy <laughs> Queen. <laughs> That's what their pack leaders are doing. Yeah, they're really nice. Yeah. Really nice. All right. Nice to see that. Really nice. So I'm going to call the Board of Selectmen regular meeting to order. Again, today's June 20th. We will uh, start this, this section off again with a Pledge of Allegiance in case someone came in late and didn't get the opportunity. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any additional agenda and consent items? Looks like we have uh, to add an agenda item to uh, amend public hearing minutes. Is that correct, Sandy? Um, we need to but then I have to, I have to add the agenda item, though, to do that, correct? You just do it during the approval of minutes. Okay. All right, we're good then. Delegations, would anyone like to speak to the commission on any other items? Anything going on in town? Anything we need to know about? Pretty casual tonight. Uh, approval of minutes. A public hearing of June 6, 2018. Yeah, I'll start off by moving to approve the public hearing minutes of June 6, 2018 as amended. That's what I just I just made that right, motion. I'll, I'll second that, but I have Okay, changed. second. What are we what are we changing here? Yeah. Uh, there was and it, on the page two it says it was agreed that this portion of the pu public hearing would be closed. That word should be would be continued, not closed. Uh, and that's on page two. That would be the change. Naturally. So. I I can't find my minutes right now, but there was also a mistake with uh, said Al Littlefield. I think I should say Jim Littlefield. Jim Littlefield. Okay. That's on the first page. 
Yeah, Mitchell, Mitch yeah. Mitch. Okay, Jim Littlefield. Okay. So. Good catch yep. on that. Yep. And terrific. Any other changes? So we're, we're uh, the, the motion is the yep. approval of the public hearing Men. as amended um, of June 6. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Terrific. Regular meeting of June 6, 2018. Move to approve the Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes of June 6, 2018 as submitted. Second. Any comments? Corrections? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Consent calendar. Move to approve the consent calendar for the meeting of June 20, 2018 in the amount of $9,724.20. Second. Comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Great. I believe we move into new business now. This is the authorization of uh, the first selectman to enter into an MOA or, or agreement with uh, the town and the firefighters, local 3377 IAFFAFLCIO. Move to authorize the first selectman to enter into a Memorandum of Agreement between the Town of East Lyme and the Firefighters Local 3377-IAFF-AFL-CIO effective July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. Second. Motion and second. Any comments? We've had an executive session on this to go over the details and, and uh, that those details will be published and become public information after tonight's meeting. Uh, basically, um, um, we have seven firefighters in town, and we've pushed their contract forward another year with a mutual, with mutual satisfaction. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Great. Next on our agenda is the tax abatement for volunteer firefighters. Selectman, what's your pleasure? I'll move to adopt. The ordinance entitled establishing ordinance establishing a tax abatement program for certain emergency services volunteers as submitted second I have one comment I meant to bring it up at, at public hearing and maybe we can amend the maybe maybe we can maybe we can't because we're changing an ordinance and we publish this but uh, the the one comment from the tax collector uh, and only one was that those citizens who will be receiving this uh, tax abatement must be um, in good standing with the tax collector's office. Uh, can't have back taxes, um, can't owe money, and then also get a, a $1,000 tax credit. This isn't a debit card they're going to get. They can't apply this tax abatement to previous balances, um, and they can't receive a tax abatement unless they're in good standing. 99% of the time, that's the case. But every once in a while, we might have someone who falls in arrears, and um, he, he's concerned that that might be an issue if we're also giving credit. Your thoughts and concerns? I think we need to hear from Attorney O'Connell. Yep. Yeah, yes. a good point on that. Sorry to throw you that curveball, uh, Attorney O'Connell. I think uh, in that situation, uh, that would be an administrative procedure uh, employed by the uh, tax collector rather than having to put it into this ordinance. Okay. Uh, there are other statutes which talk about that and the tax collector would uh, be uh, applying those other statutes okay. in conjunction with this ordinance so we wouldn't have to put that provision into this ordinance. Because it's taken care of in other ways. Yes. Thank you. That's uh, good. Before you leave the podium, um, where would that be found? Uh, in the general statutes, uh, usually Title 12, which deals with tax collection. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes. So yes, uh, roughly listening to their accounting of the people that would be eligible now, I would say that's roughly 30 people. So at $1,000 a piece, when would they be able to collect that in this calendar year for the remainder of the year? Did I miss that someplace, or is this to go into yeah. effect? I'll go into effect July 31, I mean, with, with our next fiscal year. Yeah. So it would be, um, it's a calendar year that begins and ends on, is it September 30th or August 31st? 
a beginning and an end of the year, August 31st, September 1st. So September 1st through August 31st is the calendar year that we would measure the 15% up against someone's uh, performance in, in attendance. At that point, we would apply the abatement uh, to the, um, the next year's tax bill, which wouldn't be due until July 1st. This way would give the tax collector, obviously, mm -hmm. the opportunity to budget so we know how much he has there's to There's a budget pay. issue, and then there's that October 1st um, so. you know, a snapshot of the assessment of the town. And if someone owes taxes, they have to be on that list um, of the October 1st snapshot of the tax assessment. So that's why everything was done in advance. So yes, so they would wait for their tax abatement um, uh, credit for the following July. Okay. But also kind of promotes sticking around. Um, you know, you earn something, stick around and, and receive it. So uh, we actually, we aren't looking for an expenditure from the budget. No, no. We're, we're simply, uh, this is simply going to be reflected in taxes. Correct. Right. Incoming. Yeah, the just, revenue. Just wanted to. And we'll see it in the revenue side. In next year's budget, we'll see a, a, a hole in the budget of maybe 24000 maybe 30000 mm -hmm. uh, But we'll, we'll have a good gauge. Well, we'll have an accurate exact accurate gauge of how many are already qualified and we'll be able to put that in the budget um, yes I just thought that was important distinction to make so that uh, people wouldn't be expecting to see a line item in the budget right regarding this right thank you that's all I have any other questions we have a motion already on the table yes we do I think it's the least we could do for you folks I'm sorry it took so long to get it done. Uh, I heard we've talked about it before, um, but I'm glad we're getting it done. And um, uh, you're our best ambassadors to go out there and get more recruits. And, and, and listen, this is just a token of our appreciation and, and how much we value you and your service to our town. So we do appreciate it, and hopefully this shows it a little bit. Okay? Um, um, all in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. All, all opposed? Any abstain? It's great news, great news. I'd Again, also like you. to comment on the yes, work that they've put forward already in advertising for volunteers. Yes, indeed. I've seen yep. uh, online things, yep. and also the signs are very attractive and noticeable throughout the community and posted at the firehouses. And they're working together more and more, and the whole thing is just working out. We have the two outstanding professionals um, who are volunteers as well. Uh, volunteer chiefs, at least. Um, I, I just can't figure out this part-time thing and this volunteer thing. I'm all forever going to be confused with that. But thank you all for your service to our town and uh, continue good work on that. Awesome. Next is an adoption of, uh, or to, to adopt an ordinance, a Smith-Harris House Commission name change. I'll put a motion out so we can discuss it. Move to adopt the ordinance entitled Ordinance Amending Ordinance concerning Smith Harris House Commission as submitted. Second. Motion seconded. Are there comments? In, in, in the, yeah, let's let's have some discussion. I'd love to see first of all the cooperation between the uh, <coughs> Historic Properties Commission and the Smith Harris House Commission and friends. It was obvious, you know, it caught the, the Historic Properties Commission a little bit off guard at the last public hearing. But they sat down and they resolved it. They work, they have a line of communication open now, which is fantastic to see. We have three wonderful historical properties in town and love to see them working together. And I think uh, it was really well, a real good point last time that you have to evolve and, and keep you know, refreshing what's being presented to the public, something to make people come back. Because I know, I mean, I love going there, the barn, it's a great facility, but a lot of people, okay, we've been there once, you know, now it'll keep changing as a museum does. You know, any museum you go to, things change as time goes on. It'll keep it fresh, especially when you're starting to bring in some names that are got.